What's going on? It's your boy Smoke coming back with you with another DoorDash story. We're just going to be sponsored by DoorDash. We're going to focus on another job. You know what I'm saying? We're going to just talk about just ordinary stuff that people go through on the job. You know, your side hustles, your real, your real hustle, whatever it is. So go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. You know, get the lights up. You know, if you're feeling the content, you know, share, you know, however. So, the average American, the average American is working class, okay? Let's let's not get that twisted. 70, 80% of, of Americans are working class, okay? If not more, um, you know, and it is what it is. So, what drives the American economy? The plants. That's what you need in order to have all the goods, in order to have the Walmarts and 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 stuff like that. The clothes and stuff that you wear, you gotta have these operations going on, and these operations provides jobs and opportunity for people. So I worked at a plant called Polo. Mm-hmm. The actual polo. That one of the actual polo plants is in Greensboro. Man, it's a nice plant. And I'm telling you, man, it's huge. Polo, I mean, this plant, y'all, is a huge plant. Okay. All type of polo clothes. You see the prices. We talking about anywhere from, I'm talking about from small white t-shirts. We talking about $700, $800, some, some, some of these shirts. Depend on what it's made out of, where it's going to be sold at, stuff like that. So, if anybody know about Greensboro and have worked the polo plant, no, it goes down in the polo plant. Okay. The polo, the polo plant is hands down probably, that plant is popping. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot that goes down in the polo plant, and we're gonna talk about the polo plant. <clears throat> so look, I, the polo plant had a lot of, uh, had a overflow of clothes. Okay, it was summertime, and they had a high fluctuation of orders, so they had to rent another plant, which. They call it the off-site. Now, basically, now this is how the operation works at the polo player. All right. So when you walk in the polo plant, you got to go through a security clearance. Okay. You got your forklift drivers. Now, listen. Their job, most of the forklift drivers, if they're in the warehouse, is to just pretty much load boxes. Well, no, 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 no. It's to carry stuff from the assembly line to the shipping department. That's what they do. So after the clothes are made and boxed up, they put in like, they have like a storage area. And then they'll take that and bring it over. You know what I'm saying? A special order's over. So also at Polo, we had these things called rabbits. Now, rabbits are where you stand up on the actual forklift. You got the two extended forts that's out, but you stand up on it. You got to control it with, with like one, one arm. Now, they had those because the way the forts is, the forts can lift up under the box. You can pick up three to four boxes like high. You know what I'm saying? Drag it. You can take it and you can use those to go up on the truck and load the boxes up on, on the truck. So basically, when you open up an 18 wheeler, and if that 18 wheeler got polo clothes on it, you are gonna see a bunch of brown boxes stacked from the ceiling all the way down to the to the bed of the actual truck floor. You, that's that's because it's called pallet. You gotta palletize the actual truck, okay? And the way a polo truck is stacked is from the top to the bottom. Boxes all the way from I think the truck bed is like. Uh, 54 feet, something like that. So it's from, you know what I'm saying, from the front to the back. Okay, so that's the operation. Now, 
Here's the deal. Now, in the middle of the plant, now keep in mind, in the front, you got the dock doors where all the clothes, where, you know, they ship all the clothes and put the clothes on, on, on the truck. Well, while they got the forklift bringing stuff from one area, they got the uh, rabbits going inside the truck. They got a bunch of people in the middle, right? And they got these rats. Now, there's a whole nother department. It's three floors. And it's, these, it's mainly women work these floors. And what the women do is called pick and pack. So they got these R, these uh, scanner guns, the, R, um, the RF scanner guns. Because you got to be, you have to have an RF scanner gun because that's your data gun. That's your inventory and stuff like that. So basically what they do, they get an order. They got to walk on the assembly line, pick a clothes order, put the stuff in the box. When they put the stuff in the box, they roll it down, down the conveyor. The conveyor from the third, it runs from the third, second, first, all the way down to the ground floor. Okay? When they get to the ground floor, all the polo clothes are in boxes. They come down to people. And on the boxes, these little numbers, they got to match all the numbers up. So the last three to four numbers got to match up. So it's zero. So if it's zero, three, three, zero, right? All of the zero, three, three, zero is going to go on one pallet. If it's one, two, three, four, all the one, two, three, four is going to go on another pallet. So that's how you would have to do the job. You would have to match up. It's either the last three or four digits of the polo closed numbers to put them on the pallet. And then the rabbit, and then uh, the rabbits come, take them, wrap it up, and then they'll come and either ship it on the truck or set it to the side to have it shipped on the truck later on. So that's how actually the polo plant actually operate and work. Okay, that's how they get the clothes out to y'all and everything. They got their own cafeteria in there, their own cooks, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, at the time, I was still partying hard, going real hard, right? So, man, me and my homeboy John, we went to this club called the Real Shack. Man, because at North Carolina A&T, all we did on the weekend was party. That was it, okay? We had a ball. <laughs> now, I was going to talk about this in my last video, but I just left that at the DoorDash. And I'm just going to talk about the plant video on this one right here. So check this out. So that night, that night, at the real shack, my roommate, Brandon, he from Atlanta. He went to school with one of the franchise boys. That, that whole week, he went back home to Atlanta. When he came back home, he told me, he said, man, when y'all go to the real shack, I'm going to be there. But he said, I'm going to bring my peoples. But he didn't tell us who it was. So, it was me, John, Tony, and it was like another person. I can't re remember his name. We all, you know, rode up to the, to the real shack. I had on my darn, like a... Uh, I had on like the, um, I believe it was like a uh, like a navy blue striped coat, you know what I'm saying? I had on the all white with the all uh, with the blue jeans. I had the clean white forces. I had the fitted, you know what I'm saying? I had the uh, the NY fitted, you know, fresh. So that night we up in the club, vibing and everything, getting our dance on. Who do you know? Franchise boys popped up there. Man, we went crazy up in there. Dumb boy <laughs> did the lean with it, rock with it and everything. So we had a good night that night. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we had a lot of beers that night. You know, we talked to a lot of women that night. It was a fun night. You know what I'm saying? We went to the Waffle House and everybody knows, especially in the South, you got to go to the Waffle House. Went to the Waffle House and y'all, we didn't get home. Oh, five. Had to be at work at eight. All right. I go home. I showered up. When I showered up, 
I put on my work clothes. My work clothes are already clean. I like shoot. I just catch a couple Z's, wake up. You know what I'm saying? Hop in the car, drive to work. Now, keep in mind, I had about uh, about three hours of sleep off everything. So, boom, I wake up, drive on out there. We get out there to the off-site. Now, the off-site from the polo plant is about five miles. It's like a five-mile drive. So, when we get to the off-site, guess what? The gate locked, so we can't get in there to work. So we were like, damn, what we gonna do? So I'm like, well, shoot, we about to go on to the house then. Shoot, I'm tired anyway. I ain't trying to work. So the manager was like, nah, I'm gonna drive back to the polo plant and get the and get the get the keys and come back. We're gonna start working. So I was like, well, alright, cool. Cause really, yeah, I could sit right here in the car. Cause at the time I had a 1979 Malibu. Ugly car. I'll tell y'all about that later. But it had the best heat. So I had the one the one long seat. I put my arm arm up there. I said she was gonna take them about 20 minutes. So I just, you know, I just closed my eyes for a minute. So I y'all, I closed my eyes. A lot of you not. Now keep in mind, we was there before eight. Y'all, I didn't wake up to lunchtime. Yes. Dumb jokers. Because my car was the last car. I don't know how it happened. But I was actually in the car, sleep the whole time, all the way until lunchtime. They was already working, everything, going to go get it. I was still in the car by the security gate, car running, and everything knocked out. I woke up, the sun, the sun was, I was like, oh, oh, snap, what's, what's going on? So, <laughs> so I pulled up to, to the front, I'm like, yo, they were like, bro, where you been? Them, they at surprise, they were like, yo, where you been? I'm like, what you mean? I'm like, man, I'm out there in my car asleep, y'all didn't know? They was like. Man, we, we thought we we seen some on the security camera. We were for sure. I said, man, come on, dog, bro, y'all. I lie to you not, man. I was not out. I did not know. I didn't know, and I'm Joe was already going to go get it. Already going to go get that money. I'm in the car, not that. Why? Because I wanted to party all night, all night. So, at that point, I'm going to tell y'all about when a dude was hating on me over a woman. We about to get into it. There's a lot of stuff I got to tell y'all. And this dude, his name is James. And I'm going to tell y'all what happened to James at the end of everything, too. So, y'all stay tuned for the next episode. Like, share, and subscribe for more content. All right? Your boy, Big Smoke. I'm out. Peace.